It's the question I get most often in the labor room. When should I get my epidural? People don't want to get it too early. They don't want to get it too late. So when should you get it? I am the pregnancy nurse and I am the curly head behind the website Pulling Curls where I educate moms from bump to bassinet how to have the confident collaborative birth they are hoping for. I have been a nurse since 1997 and I have 20 years of bedside experience in labor and delivery. I am also the creator of the online prenatal class for couples and I'm excited to talk to you today about when you should get the epidural because I have had this conversation with thousands, tens of thousands of couples. Okay, before we get started, I want you to know that in my online prenatal class, I have a whole chapter on pain management options. So the epidural is not your only option. There's IV pain medication, nitrous oxide, natural pain management, and the epidural. So I'll link up a link to the class in the show notes. Today though, we're going to talk about epidurals. What is the perfect time to get the epidural? And honestly, it really varies. That's what I think about studies. A lot of times there's studies that show this is the perfect time to get it, but it really depends on you. That's why you have providers when you're in labor and delivery who can really help you discuss this. This, but let's talk about in general. Since there's no perfect time to get it, what are some of the variables that you need to consider as you're deciding when to get your epidural? First off, are you going into labor naturally? Are you wanting to not have Pitocin throughout your entire hospital stay? In that case, you're probably going to want to avoid the epidural a little bit and increase your movement so that you make sure that you're really in good solid labor before you get the epidural. What number baby is it? Maybe you don't know, but on your first baby, things tend to go a little bit slower than on your second baby, especially those last five centimeters. So if you watch my labor phases video, you know that the first five centimeters tends to be a little bit more uphill and a little bit slower. And then the last five centimeters tends to be a little bit quicker, especially if it's your second, third, fourth, 12th baby. Those tend to be a lot faster. So if your second baby, you might want to consider getting the epidural a little bit earlier than you would on your first baby. The other question to ask yourself, is this a medically indicated induction? Because a lot of times we're starting an induction very early on a cervix that isn't so favorable. And so you're having contractions against a harder cervix and it may just take a little bit more time to open your cervix. But if you're there and you know that the induction's happening and it needs to happen, then you might get an epidural a little bit earlier on because you want to be sure that you're not so tired by the time you have the baby that you can't push it out. Medically necessary inductions can take days and that is a long time to try and labor naturally. So that's something to consider as well. And that was something you'd wanna talk with all of your providers, which includes your nurse, your doctor, and then consult with your partner as well. So my generic answer and what the studies have shown and what my labor and delivery experience at the bedside has shown is that you want to wait until you're about three to four centimeters and that the baby is a little bit low. Now that's not true for everybody. Some people need that epidural at two centimeters, again, because of the reasons that we mentioned, but that's usually what I encourage people to do. If you're coming in your one centimeter and you wanna have the epidural right then, I will encourage you to try and move and do some other mitigating things to help your body get into labor and to help that baby find their good position before you get the epidural. That all being said, there are things we can do and move you once you have an epidural. It doesn't mean that you, then you are just stuck in the bed, but it's just a little bit easier when you don't have the epidural. I also find that there is something about your body getting the feedback that if you wait to get the epidural just a little bit longer, labor does happen a little bit better. I don't know why. There's lots of studies out there that show different reasons, but I just really prefer that my patients wait until about three to four centimeters before they have the epidural. And I really encourage them when I work with them to find other pain management options, usually breathing, walking, distraction, that will help them get to that three centimeters and then we can get the epidural. So here's your pro tip. You have all this team around you. And in fact, in labor and delivery, your nurses will change. Sometimes nurses get reassigned and at six or seven or five, you're gonna have a shift change where a new nurse comes on. So when that new nurse comes on, if you're not still not sure, you can ask that new nurse what she thinks. A good time to ask them is after they have checked your cervix. So once they know kind of how soft your cervix is, how open it is, how the baby's positioned, both high and low, and also positioned in your birth canal, they can really give you a better idea of now a good time or if you should wait a little bit longer or if you should really get it now if you want to get it because sometimes it can be too late. Now how late is too late to get an epidural? It really depends. If it's your first baby I would gladly give you an epidural pretty much whenever until the baby is crowning at which point you really wouldn't want it and there's no way anesthesia is going to come in the room and give it to you. That's because once you get to 10 centimeters when it's your first baby usually on average you have about two hours of pushing ahead of you so you have plenty of time to get an epidural 
epidural and get relaxed before you start pushing. Is that the best plan? I don't know. A lot of people feel better once they start to push. The pain isn't as bad, so that's going to be up to you and talking with your providers. But if it's your first baby, you really have quite a long spectrum to get the epidural and you will be able to get it most often. Not everyone's the same. If it's your second baby, we tend to start to get a little nervous as you head towards eight centimeters, even seven centimeters if you're going pretty quickly, just because the epidural won't have time to set up. It won't have time to give you relief. It is really hard to sit during the epidural if you're heading into the transition phase. So I always encourage second time moms, if they're considering an epidural, to really start to think about it at six centimeters or four centimeters and get it a little bit earlier rather than later if it's something they're they're considering. Now here is the best part about being in the hospital. If you think you're going natural and you don't want an epidural and you just stall out at eight centimeters, you can still get an epidural. Just because you made the choice earlier on that you didn't want an epidural doesn't mean that you can't get the epidural later on. It's not like we throw that option out the window. Let's say you think you're gonna use IV pain medication and that's gonna get you through labor. And it, again, you get to seven centimeters and it's just not working anymore, you can get the epidural. Now let's say you come in and you want to get the epidural but you're feeling pretty great and you wanna just try it without it. You can continue to do that, especially if it's your first baby because as I said, you're really probably not going to run out of time to get the epidural. You have a lot of time to just kind of experience labor and decide how you're feeling right then. I always encourage people to decide on the pain that they're feeling right then. From when you ask to get an epidural until it, you're pretty darn comfortable, usually is about an hour, but you know, a half hour in, you're starting to get some pain relief. So uh, what I would encourage you to do is consider the pain that you're having right then. Are you managing it okay? Talk with your providers, let them know. I a thing I like to do is that if I notice that anesthesia is going to be gone for a period of time because hospital units will have anesthesia assigned to them and sometimes when they're in a cesarean section, they can't come out and give you an epidural. Obviously, they can't be in two places at once. So if I see that anesthesia is leaving the unit, I'll try and let my patients know so that if they're thinking about an epidural, we can quickly get that in before they go back. Of course, that's not always possible. Sometimes there's emergencies and then anesthesia is just not available. But if you're starting to think about it, let your nurse know that if anesthesia is looking available, you would like to consider it. There really is a lot more wiggle room than you think in this whole process. Now, a lot of it does come down to your doctor's orders. Essentially, if your doctor says you can't get an epidural until you're six centimeters, as a nurse, I cannot give you the epidural until you're six centimeters. Now, sometimes you can fudge things a little bit, but really we want to wait until whatever the doctor's orders because that's my job. It is not within my scope of practice to decide when you get an epidural. That is your doctor or midwife's job. So we do have to wait until you have an order, but most doctors, especially now, in the beginning of my 20 years, most doctors were like three to four, and now they're like, epidural is needed. You can just get it whenever you want. So that's something to talk with your provider at your appointments. Doctor so-and-so, when is it okay for me to get an epidural? When do you usually order it so that you have kind of an idea of what your doctor has to say? Because they are the final words. And then of course, it's the anesthesiologist that comes in and gives the epidural, and they'll have instruction as well as an informed consent for you at the epidural placement time. So that's when you should get an epidural. It's definitely not cut and dry. And for everyone, it's gonna be a little bit different, but definitely keep those channels of communication open with your healthcare team. And I think you'll get it at just the right time for you. If you like this video, please consider subscribing, liking it, and sharing it with people. This channel is super new around the YouTubes and I'm just trying to get out this helpful collaborative information about the hospital because I want you to work with your providers rather than against your providers. There's lots we can do together and I think that's the best way to have a hospital birth and by liking this video and subscribing, it shows YouTube that that is a great way to have a baby.